And the title of my sermon is Things Too Wonderful for Me. Things Too Wonderful for Me. If you look down in your Bible in Proverbs chapter 30 and look at verse 18, the Bible reads, There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not, the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, and the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. So this verse, um, obviously it's the Word of God, but uh, God knows everything. So as it, as it is the Word of God, it's actually the words of Agur, the son of Jakey, and he's admitting that there are certain things he just doesn't understand. He gives us four examples, and I'm, I'm quite certain there's a lot more things that he doesn't understand besides these four, but I've looked all through the Bible and I've never found the word etc. anywhere in there. So he gives us four examples, and those four things are the way of an eagle in the air. He sees the eagle. It does, he doesn't know where the eagle came from. He doesn't know where the eagle's going. The same with a serpent. He doesn't know where it came from. He doesn't know where it's going. He sees a ship out in the midst of the sea. Doesn't know where it came from. Doesn't know where it's going. And he sees a man with a maid. Doesn't know where they came from. Doesn't know where they're going. And that's, that's just proving that Agur is a, a fallible man like us. We don't know everything, but you know you can you can go and sit on a park bench or sit in a shopping mall, watch all the people coming and going, and you don't have a clue where they come from or where they're heading to. But God knows where they come from. God knows where they're going, and God knows the number of hair on every single person's head. He knows everything about them, but we have a very limited uh, understanding of the world and, and the things that we interact with on a daily basis. Ask yourself this, where do you see yourself in 10 years? You know, hopefully in 10 years you're still in the house of God. And you're still on the same path and you've got your family with you and you're 10 years wiser. And your children are 10 years older and, and everything is just 10 years better. But can you honestly say <clears throat> that in 10 years you will still be in church? You know, I've purposed in my heart that I'm going to be in church. You know, uh, Joshua 24, 15, you know, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but, you know, it just choose ye this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what I've purposed for my family. But can I honestly say no, without a doubt that we will still be in church? You know, what if I'm not even here in 10 years? What if I've got cancer and I'm not even living in 2029? What if uh, what if we uh, you know get into a, a car accident and I'm paralyzed and, and set up in a bed somewhere? We never really know. What if I'm sitting in a, in a jail cell for <laughs> for hate speech, hate crimes? You know, we all might be in there. We'd, we'd be in good company, but um, you never know what could happen in 10 years time or two decades from now. Um, Oh, so there's there's many what ifs in life, and what if we're just backslidden? What if we come to the point where we are, you know, just tired of serving the Lord? God forbid, but we fall out of church. Who's to say? You know, we we need to to take heed lest we fall. Right? We need to always be on guard. The 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 devil is always looking for an opportunity to attack our families, and we need to say stay short up in the word. So there's a lot of uncertainties in life, but uh, there are some things that I am quite sure of. I'm quite certain that this is the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. This King James Bible is 100% the Word of God. There's not a single error in it, and uh, I, I challenge anyone to show me an error inside this Bible. Um, the... Uh, <clears throat> I'm quite certain that the entire human population has descended from two people. And, and, and the world looks at that and says, that's, that's foolishness, that's crazy. But they're actually now finding science proof that we all descended from two people. That's, we've known that forever. And there was a worldwide flood. I believe it. It covered the entire earth. All right. I believe that God parted the Red Sea. I believe that, you know, Samson slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. Now, if I heard on the news 
that a man in some war zone has just single-handedly killed a thousand men on the opposing enemy uh, territory. I would say that's fake news all day long. <laughs> yeah, who is it, Chuck Norris? You know, what are we talking about here? But because the Bible says it happened, I believe it 100%. So I believe a young boy named David slew a giant with a slingshot and chopped off his own head with his own sword. I believe that uh, a man by the name of Elijah called down fire and later destroyed 450 prophets of Baal that day. That same man, Elijah, never died. That a chariot of fire came down from heaven, picked him up, and carried him to the throne room of God. I know for a certainty, I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years from now, but without a doubt, 100 years from now, I'm going to be in the kingdom of heaven, singing the praises of God with all the saints who have gone before me. You know, so there's certain things that I don't know, certain things that I don't have a doubt about. And so the sermon title is Things Too Wonderful for Me. And I could go on and on about the incredible stories in the Bible. The world looks at them and they say, that, and they, they say it's unbelievable. You cannot, you cannot for a second be serious. Well, I'm dead serious. If the Bible says it, I believe it 100%. So I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I know I'm in good company that everybody else in this room feels the same way about the Bible and what it says. Oh. With all that said, you know, there are still things that are too wonderful for me to understand. For instance, heaven. I often think about heaven. What could it, you know, we, we can't imagine what heaven's like. When we take our last breath and we're opening our eyes and we are standing in the throne room of God and we are seeing God face to face. Brother Phantom was just talking about that. You can't imagine what it's like. What is it like to to be standing in the magnificence of heaven. What is the feeling? What do you feel like when you're standing in the presence of God? You know, first chapter of Revelation, John gives us a glimpse of what it's like to see Jesus in his glorified, resurrected body. And, and my mind tries to picture that, but I know that whatever I can imagine, it's a million times less than what it actually was for him to experience that. Yeah. You ever have like um, you ever have uh, an idea of what a certain place looks like in your mind? Like going to the beach, you see the postcards, you see the pictures, and the water's so blue, and the sandy beaches are so white, and it's you can just picture everything about it, and you show up, and well, the water's kind of gray, and the the beaches are kind of dirty, and there's people everywhere. Where are we going to sit our stuff down? You know, it's just this is not what I was signing up for. <laughs> And, you know, it was kind of that way when my family traveled to Niagara Falls when I was a kid. We drove two days to get there. After driving two days to get somewhere, you have a pretty strong imagination of what Niagara Falls looks like. And you just imagine this massive waterfall, one of the largest waterfalls, if not the largest waterfall in the whole world. And we get there, we walked up to it and said, oh. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of let down. I, I expected, you know, wall to wall waterfall as high as I could see. And I was actually at eye level kind of looking down at it. And I was a little disappointed. But I promise you, there's not going to be any letdowns in heaven. When you see Christ face to face, you will not be let down. You will say, I could have never believed or imagined this at all. I'm totally blown away. And so that's, that's pretty awesome just to think about the magnificence of God. So heaven is too, too wonderful for me to even imagine. You know what else is too wonderful for me? The Godhead, the Trinity. How can these three be one? You know, I'll go around and around with the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, and that's what they like to park it on. That's what they like to argue about. Well, how can these three be one God? I don't know. I can't understand it. I just believe it. Right. And these three, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, they are one God. And I don't have to understand it. I just believe it. That's what the Bible says. So, you know, we can't understand the nature of God. It is a great mystery, and, and we should be, we should be uh, you know, just 
trying our best, but at the same time, we, do, we have to accept certain things that we might not ever be able to understand. And maybe one day when we are passed on into the kingdom of God and we see him as he is face to face, maybe he'll explain it to us or maybe we'll just know. Or maybe we'll go the rest of our existence and never understand him. Certain things might just be too wonderful for us to understand forever. Who knows? God is God. Is God. I don't think my pea brain can handle the magnificence of God. So, how has he always existed? And there's no beginning to God. You know, that's, that goes beyond our comprehension right there. You know, but, but it's true. The Bible says so. He's always existed. We live in this box called time, and he is outside of this box. We can't comprehend the things that are outside of our wheelhouse, outside of our sphere of influence, and, and what we've come to, come to know about life. So let's get to uh, the nitty-gritty. Where am I getting? What's the point of this whole sermon? Ugh. How can you apply any of this to your life? First of all, don't throw up your hands and quit studying the Word. Because, well, I just chalk it up. To, I'm never going to understand. It's just too wonderful for me. That's not what I want you to take away from this sermon. I want you to understand that, yes, there are things that are very mysterious about the Bible. There's still verses and chapters and entire books that I don't understand. And I'm going to keep studying them. And I've reread certain passages over and over and over again, and I pray that God will reveal His uh, insights to me, and He has in a lot of areas, and still there are certain ways that I do not understand the Bible. So first of all, don't throw up your hands and quit studying the Word of God, um, because you, you won't ever understand it. That's just a dumb way of thinking about it. You know, if you pray, if you'll turn to John 16 real quick, it says, uh, John 16, verse 13, Jesus is talking, and he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of the truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I believe if you have an honest and sincere heart, and you truly want to know the great depths and mysteries of the Bible, and you give it all you got, and, and you are... Uh, on your knees and praying to God and asking for revelation, I think He will give it to you. Yeah, that's just my belief. Will you understand everything about the Bible? I, I, no. So, uh, imagine this. The Bible is, is basic enough for a small child to pick it up and read and to learn and to grow. And, and it's so so deep that the, the, the smartest scholar in the world, the, the one who's been saved the longest and has studied it for, as a profession, they can never search out the vastness of the Bible. It's like being in a gym where you're, you're lifting weights to grow stronger, and as a beginner, you can only handle the smaller weights, but as you get stronger and stronger, you can now handle the, the, the larger weights. Well, you're sitting in a, in a, this is a gym, and it's got as much as you're ever going to need. And you're never going to be able to lift it all. You're never going to be able to understand it all. But you will never have to worry about, I've touched it all. I've just, I've, I've, I've mastered the Bible. No, wrong. Not even if you lived a thousand years, you couldn't figure it out. <clears throat> so, on the reverse side, don't think that you've learned everything there is to know about the Bible. Okay? And... Be weary of know-it-alls. If, if you ever run into somebody that says, well, I, and they just have an answer for every single thing about the Bible, be weary of them. They're, they're, they're pushing a lot of hot air towards you, and don't, don't buy everything they're saying. You can kind of pick up on someone that thinks they know it all about the Bible. Uh, uh, they're just selling you a bill of goods. Sometimes there's a, a genuineness to someone who just says, you know what? I don't know. Let's just pray to God and maybe he'll, under, he'll, he'll give us some revelation and we can go from there. And if you do happen to come across someone who is not as far along as you, don't, don't look down on them. Everybody's on a certain path in their journey of, of, of learning about God and, and, and coming to the knowledge of God and learning about His ways. So, you know, give them grace the same way God gives you grace. And uh, just don't be discouraged with, with your own self and your own journeys. And, and just, just imagine that we have a treasure of, we have just a wealth of information right here in His Word that 
we can just we can just find so much joy in searching out and just I just want to encourage everybody to renew your zeal for studying the Word of God and and you'll you'll be blessed the rest of your life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this night. We ask that you bless the next preacher coming up, and we thank you for your word and all the many treasures it has for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.